Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're going to talk about changing concentrations. So when you're working with solutions, there are many ways that the concentration can be expressed. It can be expressed as a percent, it can be expressed as molarity, normality, with specific gravity in the say, and it can just be expressed in any mass per volume unit, such as 1.5 milligrams per deciliter. When the concentration is expressed in this unit or other similar units or even as a percent, what we're expressing is concentration as a ratio of mass of the solute per volume of the solution. Now, if I were to multiply both sides by volume, I would get concentration times volume will equal mass. So when you take a solution and you dilute it with a dilutant such as water, the mass of your solute doesn't change. You're adding more dilutant, but you're not adding any more solute. We know mass can be defined as concentration times volume. So when you take a solution and you dilute it, you'll get a new solution, but the mass of the solute in both solutions in this is the same, which means the concentration times volume in the one solution will equal the concentration times volume in the other solution. And that's the formula we'll use when we're doing dilutions, when we're changing concentration of a solution. That formula looks like this, C1V1 will equal C2 times V2, where this represents the concentration and the volume of the first solution, and this represents the concentration and volume of the second solution. This is an inverse proportion. And what that means is as one value of the proportion increases, the other will decrease or vice versa. So in this case, as our volume gets larger, because we're putting more dilutant in it, the concentration will get smaller. And when you're doing changing concentration questions, you're gonna know three of these values and you're gonna be asked to find the fourth. But what's key in doing them properly is getting your units correct. So let's take a look at some examples and I'll show you what I mean by that. So our first example says, how many liters of a 5% solution of sulfuric acid can be made from 100 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid with a stock concentration of 88%? So we're diluting this sulfuric acid with 88% and we're going to dilute it to a solution that's only 5% concentration. I'm going to be using the formula for changing concentration, but before I start plugging anything in, I want to identify all of the variables I know, figure out what I'm trying to find, and then change any concentration units that need to be changed before I plug into the formula. So my first solution is what I'm going to call the supply solution. I'm getting this stock solution. So that's going to be my supply. And this second solution, I'm going to call my working solution. So the supply solution, the concentration is 88%. That means that there are 88 grams of solute in 100 milliliters of solution. And I'm going to express that as grams per milliliter. So I'm going to divide 88 by 100 to get 0.88 grams per milliliter. I'm taking a volume of 100 milliliters of that 88%. And because my concentration is grams per milliliter, I need my volume to be milliliters. Now I'm gonna take a look at what I know about the working solution. I want to create a solution that has a concentration of 5%, which is five grams of solute in 100 milliliters of solution, or 0 0.05 grams per milliliter. I want grams per milliliter, I don't want grams per 100 milliliter. And I'm finding how many liters. Well, I'm not gonna find out how many liters initially, I'm gonna find out how many milliliters. So this is my unknown, and it will be in milliliters. Now that I have everything in the correct units, I can plug into my formula. C1 times V1 will equal C2 times V2. And you can see that when you multiply this, the milliliters will cancel, and that represents the mass of the solute in that first solution. And that's gonna stay equivalent in the second solution. 
because we're not adding any more solid, we're just adding solvent or dilutant. You will probably be expected to put your units in when you set the formula up, but when you're doing the calculation, you can basically ignore the units. In order to solve for V2, I'm gonna take 0.88, multiply by 100, and divide by 0.05. I get a volume of 1,760 milliliters. The question asks how many liters, so we're simply gonna divide by 1,000, and it will be 1.76 liters. Let's try some more examples. In our next example, it asks how many milliliters of an 85% pure nitric acid with a specific gravity of 1.4 are required to prepare 750 milliliters of a 2.5 molar solution. In this case, our supply solution is this. It's given us our uh, a purity or a say and the specific gravity. And in the previous video, I showed how you can use those two numbers to figure out the concentration of your solution in grams per milliliter. We take specific gravity of 1.4, multiplied by the assay of 85%, change it to a decimal. And when you get a result, it will be the concentration will be grams per milliliter. We don't know the volume of that supply solution. That's what we're finding and that's going to be in milliliters. The 2.5 molar solution, the concentration is 2.5 molar, which means 2.5 moles per liter. Now, in order to change that to grams per milliliter, we need to know the molar mass of that substance. So we can look it up, or we can use the periodic table to calculate it. It will be 63.013 grams per mole. So we're gonna use dimensional analysis. We're gonna change from moles to grams. Moles is in the numerator. So to cancel it, it needs to go in the denominator. Grams in the numerator. So 63.013 grams per one mole. That allows me to cancel moles. And now that's grams per liter, but I want it to be the same unit here, which is grams per milliliter. So I'm going to change from liters to milliliters. Liters is in the denominator here, so I want it in the numerator and replace with milliliters. So one milliliter is 10 to the negative three liters, or one liter is a thousand milliliters. Now liters will cancel. When I do the calculation, I get 0.1575325 grams per milliliter. It's a big awkward number, but leave it on your calculator. Don't start rounding off during calculations, only round off at the very end. I need the volume of this working solution, which is 750 milliliters. Now I can plug these values into my changing concentration formula. So C1 times V1 will equal C2 times V2. In order to solve for V1, I'm gonna multiply this number to 750 and then divide by 1.19. When I do that calculation, I will get 99.3, and it represents a volume in milliliters, so 99.3 milliliters. Next example asks us to find the molar concentration of a solution prepared by diluting four milliliters of 90% pure acetic acid with a specific gravity of 1.2, up to 600 milliliters with water. Let's start with our supply solution. We have a specific gravity of 1.2, it's 90% pure, so we multiply by 90% or 0.9, and that gives us 1.08 automatically grams per milliliter. We're taking 40 milliliters of that supply solution, and we're diluting it up to a volume of 600 milliliters. So our working solution will be 600 milliliters. What we don't know is the concentration of that. Because the concentration of our supply solution is in grams per milliliter, we're going to find this in grams per milliliter, and then we'll change it to moles per liter using molar mass. So plugging these values into our formula, we get this equation, and in order to solve for C2, I'm going to multiply 1.08 times 40 and divide by 600. I get a value of 0.072, and I know that concentration will be in the same concentration unit as our supply solution. So grams per milliliter. That's the concentration, but I want it expressed as molar concentration, which means moles per liter. So let's just change this from grams per milliliter 
to moles per liter. So to change from grams to moles, I need my molar mass. And I want to cancel grams because it's in the numerator here. I'll put it in the denominator so it will cancel and replace it with moles. And I know that there are 60.052 grams per mole. So one mole is equivalent to 60.052 grams and grams will cancel. I want moles per liter. So I need to change milliliters, cancel it. And it's in the denominator, so I'll put it in the numerator here and replace it with liters. One milliliter is 10 to the negative three liters or one liter is a thousand milliliters. This will then give me the concentration in moles per liter. When I do the calculation, I'll end up with 1.2 moles per liter. In our last example, we have 10 milliliters of creatinine, stock standard concentration of 1.5 grams per deciliter, are diluted to 80 milliliters to make an intermediate standard. And then 20 milliliters of the intermediate standard are diluted to 300 milliliters to make a working standard. Question is, what's the final concentration of that working standard in milligrams per deciliter? We could go through the process that we used before. We're taking a stock or supply solution, we're diluting it to make another solution, and then we're taking some of that and diluting it further to make a final solution. So we could, we could go through the process of C1, V1 equals C2, V2, but we'd have to do it twice. Or we could use a bit of a shortcut. In a previous video, I talked about dilutions, and because we know all of the volumes here, we could use that formula. And that formula told us that if we take the original concentration of a solution and we multiply by the dilution factor, we would get the final concentration. So that's what I'm going to use in this example because it'll be a lot less work. We're going to start off with a concentration of 1.5 grams per deciliter. And we're taking 10 milliliters of that and diluting it to 80 milliliters. So the dilution factor for that particular dilution will be 10 to 80. Then we dilute it again. This time we take 20 milliliters of that intermediate solution and we dilute it to 300 milliliters. So the dilution factor there will be 20 to 300. We could reduce that one to eight. We could reduce that one to 15. When we take this and multiply by both dilutions, we will get the new concentration in this exact same unit. That works out to be 0 0.0125 grams per deciliter. So that's going to be the concentration of our very final solution, our working solution. They want it expressed in milligrams per deciliter, so I'm just going to use the process of dimensional analysis to change. My concentration is this many grams per deciliter. I want milligrams per deciliter, so I just need to change from grams to milligrams. Grams is in the numerator here, so I'll put it in the denominator and replace it with milligrams. One milligram is 10 to the negative three grams, or one gram is a thousand milligrams. Grams cancel, and we will end up with 12.5 milligrams per deciliter. That will be that final concentration. So I often will take this shortcut if I understand dilutions and this formula. But if you're not sure, you can use the change in concentration formula. Just remember, you're going to have to do two sets of calculations. The key in doing these is getting your units correct and knowing which concentration goes with which volume. Also know how to change from one concentration unit to another concentration unit using dimensional analysis. Yeah.